welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today is the second part of a two-part series regarding how to use temporary variables in Access. In the previous video, we discussed how to use temporary variables, temp bars, in VBA specifically. And I'll have a link to that in the description below. But today, we are going to focus on how to use temporary variables in macros. Um, just like the previous video, I'm always going to refer you back to my main article. And if you just scroll a little bit, you'll see it's divided into the two sections, VBA or macro. So today we're going to concentrate on macro. I'll also include some links here to the uh, Microsoft Learn documentation on the different actions we're going to be looking at today, which is the set temp var, the remove temp var, and the remove all temp vars. So let's dive in. The first thing obviously we're interested in is setting temporary variables. So I'm going to open the same demo database as for the previous video. And you'll see here I have created uh, example macros. So the set one. And as you'll see here, I have used the action set temp var. Then we give the name to give to that temporary variable that we're creating and then we give it the value we want passed to it. Now pay attention here that obviously if it's a string, you have to use the quotes. If it's a numeric, you don't. Um, so just the same rules always apply. Um, I'm gonna also demonstrate something here. We're gonna remove the, uh, we're gonna just make it true, okay? So here we're creating two different temporary variables one called first name with the name Marcus, and then we're creating a second temporary variable is required, and we're setting it equal to true. Um, and just to show you, you just come here, set temp var, and as you can see, it is in the listing of available actions, okay? And it's there by default. You don't have to click the show all actions. Uh, the different actions for macros are there by default. So uh, let's remove this guy. Da, da, da. Let's close this and save the changes. Let's run it. And let's go back into VBA. I'm going to use the VBA for one reason and one reason only. And that is it permits me to get the listing of macros. So I'm going to put these two windows side by side. I'm going to go back to the function I had yesterday, list temp bars. And if we run it, you will see that let's reopen our macro so we can understand. We created a temp bar name, first name, first name. We set the value to Marcus. The value is Marcus. The second one, we set a temp bar named is required, is required. And we set its value to a Boolean of true. And here we have a value of minus one. Why is that? If we bring back up here, let me reopen from yesterday, the var type. And let's refresh our memory here, var type two. So come here. It is setting it, even though we passed a Boolean, Access through the macro is actually interpreting it as an integer, okay? Not as the Boolean, which should be 11, okay? We're getting two, integer. And just to demonstrate, you can try to coerce it. See bool and close it and update it. So just rerun it. It's going to update the values and we could rerun my list and you'll say it remains an integer. So there's some type of bug disconnect between Booleans in macros and Booleans via VBA, both for temporary variables. In VBA, they're interpreted correctly as Booleans. If you do it through a macro, they get interpreted as an integer. Is it the end of the world? No, you just need to be aware of this and then therefore depending on what you're doing, how you're using that temporary variable, you may want to use cbool on it in your manipulations. But at the core, the value is still being stored properly. Um, the numeric value, I mean. 
Um, let's try switching this to false. Let's run our macro. And then let's clear this out. Let's relist them. And you'll see that it switched to zero. So the numeric representation of Boolean zero and minus one is still working properly, but it isn't the right data type nevertheless. So there's a bug there. Um, needless to say, I reported this to access the dev team years ago, actually, when I first developed the article. And I recently resent them another notification about it because I couldn't find any correspondence uh, replies to my original uh, inquiry into the issue. So I don't know if it'll ever get resolved, uh, but it has been there for a while. Just be aware of it. Okay, so that is that. We now know how to create temporary variables very easily. And it's simply using the set temp var action. Now, how do we retrieve a variable? Well, it's basically the same premise that we have in VBA. Um, we need to only call it using the, always the same format. Temp var exclamation is required. Okay. So what I've done here is need a, a reason to use it. We could use, if it's numeric or whatever, we could be doing ifs and ors. We could be doing comparisons. Um, today, I simply chose to use a message box where I'm concatenating a string with here is the value of the temp var. And then I'm just going to simply output it. And there you go. Here is my temp var value. And it says zero. If we bring back up our list right, is required is currently set to zero. So that is working perfectly fine. Next, deleting and removing temp vars. It's the exact same general idea as the VBA. We have two different actions. One to delete a single temp var, and we have another one that can clear all the temp vars out of memory. So let's look at deleting a single one, and then we can concentrate on wiping them all. So I have remove, and then I have remove all. So we come here, and you'll see I'm using the remove temp var action and then you have to give it the name of the temp var you want removed. Okay, so like I say, remove, and you just scroll down, temp var. It's right there. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to say get rid of the is required temp variable. So let's close it. Sure, we're going to run it. Let's clear this guy. Let's run our list again. And as you can see, our previously is required second item, second temp variable is now no longer. Um, so we can recreate it if we wanted to, just by there. And now if we run this guy again, it will reappear. So we use the, as you saw, remove temp var when we want to selectively delete a temporary variable. Now, if our goal here is to delete all the temporary variables, well, in that case, we use the remove all temp vars. So remove, remove all temp vars. And in this case, there is no argument to give to it because you're not specifying which temp variable to delete. It is going to delete them all. So if we delete, the, if we run this, and we clear this out and we run our list function again. There is currently nothing to list because we just said remove them all. Now, the testing of an existence of a temporary variable. How do we test? Well, it's the exact same thing. As we saw in the VBA, we can check if a temporary variable exists by using the is null function. So if a temporary variable doesn't exist, okay, so let's check something here, All right, is required, just to prove, we get null. If I come here and I run this, and I try it now, you'll see you get the, var the value. So we now know that if the temporary variable doesn't exist, it returns a null value. So we can use that even in a macro. So if we come here and we create a new blank macro, we can do the if statement. And we can do is null, right? And we can take our 
is required. So if it is null, then what do we do? Well, that depends on you. We could do the set, just scroll down, temp var is required, and we're going to set it to true. And you could then come here, add the else. It exists, and we could do message, I always get it wrong, message box, message is required is already true type uh, information is required required status so we could come here is required is already true okay which in fact that isn't true. We sh I should have instead done right. We should have done is required is currently and do a concatenation because it currently isn't true, is it? No, it's false. And the then we could wipe it. Let's do the remove all. Come on, remove all. And now if we run it, we don't get the message, but it should now be set, right? Because in our function, we use the set, which it now is set to true. If we run it a second time, now we get the minus one. And we could try something. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's just try something. Will this return the proper textual representation yes it does so we can use cbool to convert it properly to true and false values so if we were to come here use vba just because it's quicker do that we've changed the value and now we should get false is required is currently false so as you can see we can use is null to check if it exists and then we could use it to initialize a temporary variable or do any other series of actions. You know, it could be reporting to the user with a message box, popping up some type of warning. Hey, it currently hasn't been set. Things like that. And that basically wraps it up for temp vars. Um, we've looked at the VBA. We've looked at the macros. And I would like to thank each and every one of you for spending a couple of minutes with me today. If you don't mind, like, subscribe, share, drop me a comment below, and uh, I will wish you a great day. Take care, guys.